TV, Wake Up America, and boy, I'll tell you, I got a, a funny awakening today. I was watching Channel 35.4 with Muslim, some Wahhabi dude on there with a red and uh, white kerchief over the top of his noggin, and uh, pontificating uh, on the eloquence of Islam, and young teenagers were coming up to the microphone and asking him questions. I don't know, there was a couple hundred, couple thousand Muslim kids there, and one cute little girl in whatever she is wearing, and she asked the question, well, according to the Quran, can we have braces, you know, so we don't look like, Argh. our teeth are all goofed up. And the answer of the Imam uh, Sheikh and Bake, that's his name, Imam Sheikh and Bake, looks like a Wahhabi from Saudi Arabia to me. Uh, Imam Sheikh and Bake said, no, no braces. If I heard that right, if I'm wrong, you know, correct me on your next show, and I'll correct myself, but... Um, the poor little girl, she, uh, she clouded up and pouted. I felt really bad for her. I mean, all boys and girls want to look good. They wear good clothes, and boys wear boys' clothes, and girls wear girls' clothes. And by the way, the answer from Imam Sheikh and Bake stating that um, what Allah has given you, you can't improve it. Well, then I would suggest don't wear clothes. And Imam Sheikh and Bake you were wearing glasses. Yeah, you had glasses on, so what Muhammad has made, don't improve to it. Um, okay. Brushing your teeth, hygienics, looking good, uh, taking care of your body, lifting weights, whatever. I guess under Islam, that's out. Okay, done with that. Then some nice young man got up there, teenage boy, and asked Imam Shake and Bake, so what about the arts and entertainment, painting and movies and musicals and musical instruments and things like that. And Imam Sheikh and Bake stated that, well, if you go to the disco and you're working on a girl, a Christian girl, and evidently you want to fall in love with a Christian girl, that's a no-no. You, According to Imam Sheikh and Bake, that movies are okay as long as it promotes Islam. If it promotes Islam, you can do it. So, with that, we're going to watch a parody, comrade Imam Sheikh and Bake, and the rest of you folks watching that Muslim channel and these bizarre answers. And by the way, after I'm done with this, I'm going to prove that Muhammad was a white man with black slaves, that Muhammad masturbated between the thighs of a six-year-old girl, that Muhammad was bewitched, that Muhammad um, believed that if you drank camel piss, it would be better for you. And I'll read it out of the Quran and the Hadith. Oh, Muhammad, Allah Akbar. Here you go. Okay, clip number one. Let's watch a Muslim movie.
رجدار و تلکن و بیسین لفکر علات و مفلس رجدار و تلکن و بیسین لفکر علات و مفلس بوت رکوچین با حوا و تاریخ جرین دوا بوت رکوچین با حوا و تاریخ جرین دوا و داشین داشین بزنیر به ایدوشین داشین داشین بزنیر به ایدوشین قرآنی من بی قع امیر کم قاقع قرآنی من بی قع رقمان لبونی نه نه کیفان من پاره قطره زمان من گل و کتر کیفان من پاره قطره آشتی لالا من خطره داشین داشین بزنیر به ایدوشین داشین داشین بزنیر به ایدوشین لاتیچانو حجاز و ببونی سیرو پیاز و لاتیچانو حجاز و هاتوین بر روتی قاز و شیدای جهادو نیکا این کن ببینی زور مرتاح شیدای جهادو نیکا این روله حجاجو سفاح داشین داشین بزنیر به ایدوشین داشین داشین بزنیر به ایدوشین That's parody. There's a Muslim movie. Those guys are Muslim. They're Kurdish. Now, it's very interesting to me, as a former Marine Corps officer with a lot of hot kinetic combat experience in Vietnam, the Kurds are fighting ISIS, Daesh, and doing a heck of a good job, um, given their limited weapons. I mean, da ISIS, Daesh, has got our weapons, and so obviously they have the edge. Um, it's interesting also, as a former Marine Corps officer, um, having served in uh, Vietnam and whatnot, understanding intel. In that clip, they clearly state that Qatar, where CENTCOM is, our military headquarters are in Qatar, uh, which is on the Arabian Peninsula, and also Qatar, ISIS, Sunni, Muslims. You've got um, Syria, current day Iraq, and Iran are all Shiites, and they're all being attacked by the Sunnis of uh, um, that area of the ISIS. Qatar is funding it. Now, a lot of people don't realize it. Qatar is considered to be one of our allies, but they fund global terrorism. They fund ISIS, so we have all the proof, evidence, and facts on that. And right there in that clip, while it's very humorous, uh, which we enjoy, uh, people in the West, it also has some pretty serious stuff in there, too, about Qatar funding them, very dangerous. It also mentions that ISIS is global from Chechnya to the Hejaz, Philippines, all over the whole world, all over the whole globe. So going back to Imam Sheikh and Bake, the uh, Saudi Wahhabi um, Imam that I was watching today, answering these questions from these teenagers, it was obvious that the teenage kids asking the questions were very sincere and they truly wanted to know the truth. But of course, they're asking a guy who's a liar. He's, he's a true, bona fide Muslim. And according to the Quran, yes, 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 yes. I have, this is my own Quran. I read it. I understand it. I know it. So all you guys out there yelling and screaming, if you just read the Quran, you would know how wonderful and peaceful Islam is. Well, I read the Quran, and I know how dangerous and crazy and insane Islam is because Islam is all based on what did Muhammad do. We, as Christians, what did Jesus do? They the shake and bake, and the other dude from Florida, Yusuf Estes, if I said it right, who used to be a pastor and now 
he's become a Muslim, guess he wants to go to hell, they adhere to the Quran. And in the Quran, we read in the Quran, in Islam, Muhammad is considered to be the al-insan al-kamil, the ideal man or the perfect man. He is an excellent model of conduct, Quran 3321. Do what Muhammad did, and you will be a good Muslim. What did Muhammad do? When you watch ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, the Amirs of the Caucasus, Abu Sayyaf, all of the different groups under the Muslim Brotherhood who controls 100% of the Saudi-funded mosques in Los Angeles, in Riverside, in San Diego, California, New York, Texas, Canada, Toronto, all of those guys do what Muhammad did. And soon what we saw in Canada yesterday with the three attacks against the soldier, the mall, and the parliament, that's going to start happening more and more frequent because that's what Muhammad did. We as Christians, when we make mistakes, we can say, wow, go to the Bible, read the Bible, find out what did Jesus do. In Islam, when they do something wrong, they go to the Quran and they do what Muhammad did. did. Dud is right. He was a dud. He was a lunatic. Crazy. He was bewitched, according to Bukhari, one of the top hadiths. Narrated Aisha, the six-year-old girl that married the masturbating Muhammad. That's what he did. Next week, I'll show clips about it. I guarantee it. Right out of Ayatollah Khomeini. A man called Labid bin al-Assam from the tribe of Bani Zarite, worked magic on Allah's apostle until Allah's apostle Muhammad started imagining that he had done a thing that he had not done. He was bewitched. Bukhari, volume 7, number 660, narrated Aisha, six-year-old wife of Muhammad, six-year-old wife of Muhammad. Magic was worked on Allah's apostle Muhammad so that he used to think that he had sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not. He was under the effect of magic. That's from the Hadith, from the Muslim holy book. So little girls, maybe it's not so bad that you can't get your teeth fixed and then your dream boy who wants to do what Muhammad did would have you and three other girls in temporary marriages. And if he wanted to divorce you according to Sharia law, all he has to do is say, Divorce, divorce, divorce three times and you're done. Your history, toast, adios. Okay, so this is long stuff, pretty serious stuff. It leads to getting, people getting killed like the World Trade Center, like yesterday. And it should be understood also that as the Muslims grow with each percentile, they get more and more aggressive, more and more dangerous, and we're only at 1%. Up there in Toronto, I believe in the Toronto area, they're around 7 to 10% of the greater Toronto area across all of Canada, maybe two and a half to three percent. Okay, all right, all right, so, okay. The Muslim's holy book, the Quran, instructs a good Muslim repeatedly to obey Muhammad, 22 verses. In the Quran, 332, 3132, 413, 459. 469, 592. Like in the movie we just saw there, Imam Shake and Bake, a good Muslim should do what ISIS does because that's what Muhammad did. He attacked, he murdered, he raped, he killed. On there it said, we're going to have jihad and sex. That's what Islam's all about. When you look at Muhammad, what did Muhammad do? When he wasn't bewitched and thinking he was copulating with women, he wasn't. And when he was drinking camel piss for his health, which I'm going to read next. So all you kids going to watch the, you know, ask a imam, shake and bake. Why don't you ask him about that stuff? Why don't you read this stuff from the Hadith and the Quran and stuff? All this stuff's on my YouTube site, Steve Klein. And all you Muslims out there that want to kill me, get in line. There's already a $100,000 fatwa. Hamas and Hezbollah have it on me. I don't care. It doesn't bother me a bit. When Jesus says, my time's up, my time's up. That's the way it goes. Okay, back to the Quran. A good Muslim does what Muhammad did. 
Sura 81, 820, 846, 971, 24, 47, 24, 51, 24, 52, 24, 54. I'm running out of gas. 24, 56. Maybe I should get some braces. Well, I don't know. Maybe I should be like the little boy and ask, is it okay if I make movies? Well, I'm glad the Kurds made that movie because those guys are fighting for their lives. Those guys are very brave. If ISIS captures those guys, they're going to slowly behead them after they torture them, probably cut off their, each of their hands, each of their feet, and then slowly chop their head off, which is what Muhammad did while he wasn't having sex with all the girls he wasn't having with and drinking camel piss. Okay, Surah 33, 33, 47, 33, 49, 14. By the way, the L.A. Sheriff Baca and the LAPD support the Muslim Brotherhood. I showed that last week on my clips. And you can go on to the website there, look up Steve Klein videos, and they post them up there. They're up on my YouTube site where I'm getting between two and 5,000 views a day. Um, Surah 5813 and Surah 6412. A good Muslim does what Muhammad did. Now, Inside the infiltration of the United States, just like Sheriff Baca aiding and abetting the Muslim Brotherhood, Maher Hathut, Hussam Ailush. Oh, some of you guys know I know the names, huh? Yeah, I do. I know them. I've been face to face with them. I know them. I understand. I'm still alive. Not only the LA Sheriff, but the LAPD, Charlie Beck and Michael Downing, the counterterrorism. A chief, and it's inside Homeland Security. In fact, they just found a spy, Muslim Brotherhood spy, inside Homeland Security, and we will show clip number. Are you ready, Adam? Two. Clip number two. This next story sounds so outrageous, it's hard to believe, but it's true. An appointed member of the administration's Homeland Security Advisory Council supports terrorists. I'm talking about a guy named Mohammed el -Abiyari. He sounds great on paper as the founder of an intelligence firm. He's advised local, state, and even the federal government on combating terrorism. He was even awarded the FBI's highest public service award for his tremendous service in combating violent extremism and has been recognized in counterterrorism legal cases. But his bio conveniently forgets to mention that he's an expert on things like radicalism and jihad because one of his closest friends is a known terrorist. He has repeatedly shown support for Shuki, I, Shuki, I, I'm Shukori Abu Baker. Yes, I got through that. The former president of the Holy Land Foundation. In case you forgot, Baker and three others were thrown in jail for using their charity to finance Hamas. This guy went down as playing a key role in the largest terrorism financing trial in our nation's history. Now, the Department of Homeland Security, they're supposed to keep people like this out not let them into an exclusive club of the administration officials who actually get access to classified information. Now, national security expert Ryan Morrow of the Clarion Project recently interviewed El Abiyari, and he joins me with the details. Okay, so give me some background. Wait. Okay, very good job, Amriki. Very good job. Okay, so allegations of the cover-up, what happened... That was made a while ago, but now we understand in a news article that came out, they just fired, um, but they didn't fire, they let him go. He should be in prison for being a spy from what I'm reading. Um, he posted the inevitable return of the Muslim caliphate, ISIS, may have played a role. Investigation into allegations that he improperly accessed and used classified materials obtained with his security clearance. That's called a spy. LBRI was originally appointed to Homeland Security and reappointed in 2013 with the elevated title of Senior Fellow. Department of Homeland Security informed Representative Louis Gohmert of Texas in July about LBRI's status. Now, Gohmert's a pretty smart guy. He was a, uh, a judge also. LBRI, member of the Muslim Brotherhood, supporting the Calif Caliphate, supporting ISIS, 
in Homeland Security, just like Sheriff Baca, the L.A. Sheriff, and the new Sheriff, just like the LAPD, Charlie Beck, and Michael Downing, supporting, aiding, and abetting the Muslim Brotherhood, ISIS. Elabiari's tweets were later praised by affiliates of the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, ISIS, and potentially used to recruit extremist followers. So now we got girls going over, young girls to join ISIS to kill people. And we've got over, I'm sure the guy that got killed yesterday in Parliament was supporting ISIS. And I'm sure the guy in Canada, in Ottawa, who ran over the soldier and killed him and injured the other one was shot to death. He supports ISIS. And from what I understand, there was a third attack also in a mall, which I don't know anything more about. I could be wrong on that. It doesn't matter. Because you see, what did Muhammad do? The guy lost control. He was bewitched. He was crazy. He was insane. He was a white man with black slaves. We got all the proof right here says, Muhammad, Black Slaves, from Volume 9, Book 91, Number 368 of the, uh, of the Hadith. It says, there came a slave and pledged allegiance to uh, Muhammad. It says, and Muhammad, he did not know that he was a slave. Then there came his master and demanded him back, wherein Muhammad uh, said, sell him to me. And Muhammad bought him two black slaves. Woo! Two black slaves. Two black slaves. See how they run. There you go. Okay, now that's right out of the holy book, the Hadith. In another one, Ibn Qayyam al Jazia, in his book, Zad al Ma'ad, Muhammad had many male and female slaves. And by the way, the, the Muslims are kidnapping approximately 500,000 black people a year in Africa and all around the world, Filipinos. We had two Saudis, one in Irvine, California, one in Denver, Colorado, who were both arrested for having slaves. That's what Muhammad did. So when we as Christians do things wrong, we go to the Bible and we correct it. What did Jesus do? We stop. No more. With Islam, okay, they, we say, hey, why are you, what, white man, Muhammad, why do you got all the black slaves? What, what do they do? They go to the Quran, the Hadith, and they get more slaves because we can correct our problem under what did Jesus do under the Quran and the Hadith. They make the problem worse. They go out and they get white people buying more black people. It says, uh, Muhammad had many male and female slaves. He used to buy and sell them, but he purchased more slaves than he sold. He once sold one black slave for two black slaves. His purchase of slaves were more than he sold. So for the little girl worried about the braces, maybe you should be more worried about you might be enslaved as a sex slave, even though you're Muslim, because after all, what if you get married and your husband marries three other girls, because that's what you can do and has temporary prostitute marriages and stuff too. Oh, by the way, by the way, under Sharia law, from the Little Green Book by Ayatollah Khomeini, who was an expert on uh, Sharia law, he states that little boys and little girls can contract a temporary marriage even as young as grammar school, first grade through sixth grade, so they can have sex if they want to, according to Sharia law, and they don't have to get the permission of their fathers. Wow. Do I get an Allah Akbar on that? That alone ought to straighten your braces right out. Everything I do, I have all my proof, evidence, and facts with me. I carry this stuff with me everywhere I go. So... Hamas and Hezbollah, if you do kill me, you can verify it with my briefcase. I've got all this information in there, and you can say, wow, the kafir, the infidel, was telling the truth. Also, under Sharia law, if a man has sex with a married woman by mistake, if a man has sex with a married woman by mistake, wow. Wow. I guess if she's got crooked teeth, they're going to straighten out. And I guess you could make a movie about this, and maybe this will make Islam expand and grow. I mean, according to Imam Shake and Bake, with his little red and white apron on top of his noggin, maybe he fell off his toboggan. Okay. If a man has sex with a married woman by mistake, thinking her to be his wife, he must give her a dowry equal to the dowry given to a woman of her social worth. This dowry becomes the property of the wife and not her husband. Okay. 
In regards to the female sexual organ, from the Quran 424, and this is Sharia law, such wives as you enjoy thereby, give them their wages appropriate. The enjoyment mentioned in this Quran verse is the sexual pleasure, and the wages is the dowry. And the dowry was called a wage because it is a wage of enjoyment. And that proves that the wage is an exchange of the woman's sexual organ, what would we call that, or the sexual intercourse, for what is given in exchange for an enjoyment is called a wage. For the wages of braces, you can improve your faces, but you're born as Allah made you, so you might as well just make do. That's a shake and bake said. The, the scholars disagreed, and, and by the way, if you want to kill me, I really don't care. My wife doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, the scholars that I've been surrounded multiple times, death threats, all kinds of stuff. So don't worry about it. Get over it. Go read your Quran and your Hadith and find out that indeed Muhammad, uh, Bukhari, volume 1, number 234, the prophet Muhammad ordered his followers to go to the herd of camels and drink camel piss. Bukhari, volume 1, number 234. Wow. Wow. So he's a white man with black slaves, and he writes in Sharia law, if you have sex with a different woman by mistake, now, how do you do that? I've been married 44 years. I've never had that. I've Okay. Um, and the dowry was called a wage because it's a wage of enjoyment, and that proves that the wage is an exchange for the woman's sexual organ, which starts with a V like Victor, or the sexual intercourse for what is given in exchange for the enjoyment is called a wage. For the wages of sin or death, whoop, there you go. The scholars disagreed as to what is the thing that is being contracted in the marriage contract. Is it the body of the woman, her sexual organ, or the enjoyment that comes from the use of the woman's sexual organ, or both? What is obvious is both, because the con contract stipulates all that. Abu Bakr al-Razi said in the Quran 424, this verse is a proof that the freeing of the slave girl cannot be her dowry because this verse proves that the woman's sexual organ, starting with the letter V like Victor, is something which has a monetary value. So little girl, your braces, your teeth have no monetary value, but then again, your sexual organs do. Okay, so back now inside Department of Homeland Security, just like Los Angeles sheriffs, Los Angeles police, and this is true all in all the major cities throughout the United States. Wherever the Muslim Brotherhood are working, that'd be Council on American Islamic Relations, Islamic Society of North America, anything that starts with Islamic Society of Houston, of San Francisco, Islamic Society is Muslim Brotherhood. They all, the stuff that I'm reading there, they believe. They believe. They believe. They believe. What color was Muhammad from Bukhari? Bukhari. The white man with black slaves. Black slaves owned by the white man named Muhammad. So if you're a black Muslim, then you should say that Muhammad is a white devil. Muhammad started all this stuff with the black slaves. While we were sitting with the prophet in the mosque, a man came riding on a camel. He made his camel kneel down in the mosque, tied its foreleg, and then he said, Who among you is Muhammad? At that time, the prophet was sitting among us, leaning on his arm. We replied, the white man reclining on his arm. So all of you black athletes out there with the name Muhammad, Metmed, and Akbar, and all this other stuff, that's okay. I mean, it's America. You can do whatever you want to do as long as it doesn't hurt somebody. But the dude that you're named after, Muhammad, is a white guy with black slaves. Bukhari, volume 2, number 122. Muhammad is described as a white person. Bukhari. Now, Bukhari is like the definitive 
for Islam of the, the Hadith, where King James for Christians, Bukhari, and all of these are Bukhari. Bukhari, Volume 2, uh, Muhammad is described as a white person. Bukhari, Volume 2, Number 141, narrated Anas bin Malik. The Prophet never raised his hands for any invocation except for that of Istiska, and he used to raise them so much that the whiteness of his armpits became visible. Okay, white guy, Muhammad, black slaves, male and female, bought and sold. He bought more than he sold. Bukhari, volume 4, number 744, narrated Ismail bin Abi Khalid. Now look, you know, all of these guys that keep saying that Islam is a religion of peace and that we white devils and all this bad stuff, I'm, all I'm doing is reading from your books. All you guys jumping up and down on the bed or wherever you're sitting or beating the hell out of your girlfriend because the white man's telling the truth, what's your problem? I'm just reading from your book. What did Jesus do versus what did Muhammad do? What did Muhammad do versus what did Jesus do? It's real simple. For those of you shocked by yesterday with the shootings in Ottawa, how can you be shocked? With all of the news, with all the intelligence, with the internet, with everything that we have, with the way TV, wake up America, how can you be shocked? With all of your college education, going to the best schools and universities in the world, and you have all of this information out there and you're still buying into this lie from George W. Bush that Islam is a religion of peace, well, you know, one of the biggest funders, along with Qatar, in funding global jihad, murdering, killing, supporting ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Amirs of the Caucasus in Europe, here in America, the Muslim Brotherhood, are in control of 100% of the Saudi-funded mosques. In the Philippines, they're Abu Sayyaf. In China, they're called the Uyghurs. Okay. Funded by Saudi Arabia. Adam, are you awake? Okay, I don't know if Adam Amriki is awake. We're going to give him a test. Number 20, please. Number 20. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through in that small cafe the park across the way the children's carousel chestnut trees the wishing well I'll be looking at the moon but I'll be seeing you wow what do you think about that so in Islam little kids according to Sharia law in Islam little kids in uh, grammar school, uh, they can fornicate, they can have temporary marriage, they don't have to ask their kids. That's right out of Ayatollah Khomeini, who is a, uh, an expert on Islam. Um, by the way, um, back to making movies to expand and help um, promote Islam. I, I don't know if that promotes Islam or not. I, I hope it doesn't, and uh, there is a very proper, lawful use of the movies and of songs. For example, I sing this song, O oh, Muhammad Allah Akbar, you beat the girls all black and blue. You're a wild man, such a madman, O oh, Muhammad, it is true. In a cavern without Khadija, drinking camel piss, you know. Do a Muhammad, dreadful prophet, and his silly old burro. Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. Hey, as a Marine Corps officer, I didn't walk around Vietnam, so I'd be afraid of you guys who want to kill me. I don't care. 
As I told the media on September the 12th, 2012, when my name was mentioned for being responsible for the death of the ambassador of Benghazi, I replied the truth that it was Hillary Clinton's fault. Oh, and by the way, by the way, my friend Nakula Basile Nakula, who made that video, he was thrown into prison absolutely as a political prisoner at the command and demand of Hillary Clinton and Obama because both of them, totally incompetent, and both of them are absolutely 100% responsible for the death of the ambassador of Benghazi, Chris Stevens, and 100% responsible for everything that happened. As I said in my deposition several months ago in Los Angeles when I was deposed, after having been interrogated by the FBI multiple times. When I was deposed, I told the attorney deposing me when she kept badgering me about this movie. I said, hey, you know what? If it hadn't been for Hillary Clinton lying and Mohammed, or Obama, yeah, Mohammed, Mohammed Obama lying, nobody would have ever known about the video. But because Hillary lied, because she's an incompetent and she's 100% responsible for the death of the ambassador, Obama jumped in and made it worse. Both of them lied. And as I told the FBI, you know what? If it wasn't for Hillary and Obama, nobody would have known about that video. And not only that, because they got on so many times national TV in front of the United Nations and lied and lied and lied to cover their sins. They sinned. They're the ones for responsible, 100% for not protecting the ambassador. If they had done their job, Ambassador Stevens would be alive today. But they didn't. They're incompetent. And so since they're incompetent, they did like, what would Muhammad do? They lied. Takia. Yeah, I know a few Arabic words. Takia. I understand. Takia. And Fitna. And Kitna. I understand. And Hudna. I understand. And Wahed and Ithname. I understand. If it hadn't been for Obama and Hillary lying, and then going out in an act of, I, you can't really call it vengeance, because the responsibility was 100% theirs. They're the ones that didn't protect the ambassador. They're the ones that did not protect the people in Benghazi. They're the ones that got the ambassador murdered. They made it worse. Just like, what did Muhammad do? They made it worse. I mean, they went to their Quran and they lied more by arresting Nakula, Basile Nakula, as a political prisoner, having nothing at all to do with what happened in Benghazi. He had nothing to do with it. In fact, by them lying about the video, they sparked the outrage across the globe, causing all of the violence, the murder, the mayhem, the burning, that's all on the heads. That blood is on the heads. The guilt is on Obama and Hillary. Not me, not on Nakula. It's 100% on Hillary and Obama. And then they made it worse. They did, what would Muhammad do? They made it worse. They went to their own form of the Quran. They grabbed it. Well, what would Muhammad do? Oh, they would throw Nakula in prison for six months when he hadn't done anything wrong. He did everything in accordance with the First Amendment of the United States, period. Had they not lied, there would have been no issue. Oh, Mohammed, Allah Akbar, you beat the girls all black and blue. You're a wild man, such a madman. Oh, Mohammed, it is true. In a cavern without Khadija, drinking camel pee, you know, dwelt Mohammed, dreadful prophet and his silly old burro, hee-haw. Everything I just sang there is very good, very humorous. It's right out of the Quran, right out of the Hadith. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, all right. So we just watched George Bush holding hands, walking around, protecting the number one terrorist in the world, the king of Saudi Arabia. Why is he the number one terrorist in the world? Not only because he is, because he funds terrorism everywhere, Everywhere you see the attacks up there in Ottawa yesterday, all of the funding of the mosques up there in Ottawa come from, guess where? Saudi Arabia. 
where does all of the doctrine and the hate-filled ideology that goes into the mosque up in Ottawa, where does it come from? Saudi Arabia. What did Muhammad do? Well, the same thing. What did Satan do? What did Muhammad do? Versus what do we do? What does Jesus do? Okay. Now, a lot of people, Sheriff Baca especially, are very confused on the First Amendment. I believe Michael Downing, the LAPD commander, uh, police chief, uh, Michael Downing, the assistant police chief who's the counterterrorism commander for LAPD. All three of those guys aid and abet support Muslim Brotherhood. I don't think they understand that the First Amendment is not absolute. I have heard Sheriff Baca state that he raised his right hand to support and defend the Constitution, the First Amendment, and that there's an absolute right of freedom of religion under the First Amendment of the United States. That's absolutely false. For example, everything in the First Amendment, the four parts, religion, speech, press, and assembly, are all qualified. They all have to be peaceful. You cannot harm people. You cannot injure people. You cannot chop up people. You can't blow up people. You can't do what ISIS does. But Islam is based on what did Muhammad do, and everything Muhammad did was dangerous. When you see ISIS on TV, you're watching Muhammad 14 centuries later. When you think about the Crusades and why the Europeans responded in going out to the Holy Land, we've been lied to so often that they went out there on an offensive mission. Absolutely not. For 500 years from the time of Muhammad's death until the first uh, crusade in the 13th century, 500 years, they were attacked hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. There is a leader of one of the major religions in the United States, a portion, a faction of the Latter-day Saints, the LDS, the Mormons, the fundamental Latter-day Saints. And actually, Warren Jeffs, who's in federal prison right now for polygamy, child molestation, pedophilia, is doing the same thing that the prophet Joseph Smith did. And we have that all documented. We have all the proof, evidence, and facts. Everything I do on this show, I have all the proof, evidence, and facts. If I didn't, I would have been sued in the ground many times, a long time ago. Okay, so I put together a video a couple of years ago. I've been involved in a number of First Amendment lawsuits. I know it pretty good. I've only lost one out of multiple lawsuits on the First Amendment. I understand it pretty good, even though I'm not an attorney. I have three attorneys working with me. We started by helping street preachers so that they couldn't be locked down, protected under the First Amendment, and things grew little by little through the Holy Spirit and with outreaches that we did and little problems that pop up, especially with Islam. Then we learned and adapted, and we grew stronger and stronger and stronger. Don't be afraid what you're going to say when you're hauled into court because the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do, which I've been hauled into court a number of times, and it's amazing. It's true. What's really cool is when you go to a federal court under the First Amendment, you know a lot of people are shy. They don't want to share Jesus. Well, you know, I might offend somebody. Well, when you get dragged into federal court like me, the judge says, why did you do what you did? I said, well, Your Honor, it's in the Bible. Really? And then he commands me, demands me, like Paul before, um, I think it was Festus, well, tell me in the Bible, where is this found? And so into the court proceedings, I get to read from the Bible. Okay. So this next clip, is it un-American to regulate religion? In the United States, a lot of people don't realize that we have always regulated religion. We have never permitted dangerous religion. We have never permitted dangerous speech. We have never permitted dangerous press. We have never permitted dangerous assembly to petition the government for redress of grievance. It's peaceably assembled to petition the government for redress of grievance, not falsely cry fire in a crowded theater, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we have always regulated religion, and today at this very moment, the leader of the fundamental Latter-day Saints, Warren Jeffs, doing exactly what Joseph Smith did with multiple wives, including mothers and daughters, and girls under 14 years old, is in federal prison, praise God. Clip number, Adam, are you awake? I don't believe it. Let me see you. You awake? Uh, you never go to sleep. Do you, like the, do you like the music that the Kurds do on ISIS? Well, okay, we will show that after this. Okay, I want to watch clip number 15, please.
Most Americans believe it's un-American to regulate or prevent a religion in America from existing. Let's flip it. If the religion is un-American, is dangerous, can the First Amendment regulate it? Islam means submit. So a Muslim, Islam's verb, to Muhammad. What would Muhammad do? A good Muslim, Islam's verb, to Islam, does what Muhammad, the perfect man in Islam, would do. Muhammad is the paradigm example for proper behavior. So, should Islam be regulated or prevented depends on what would Muhammad do. Muhammad married a six-year-old girl and had sex with her when she was nine. Muhammad lied, murder, assassinated, beat his wives to have sex. See the Quran, Surah 434. Muhammad got his men by buying them with power, money, and sex. Muhammad, Islam, never mention the golden rule, just the opposite. Do unto others before they do unto you is a central message of what would Muhammad do. Keeping it simple, Muhammad developed his PMS, religion, power, money, and sex, and it has become an RPM religion, religious, political, and military. If you wish to be a good Muslim, then do what Muhammad did. You become RPM, religious, political, and military. So when you Islam, verb, to Islam, you may marry six-year-old girls, lie, assassinate, beat your wife to have sex, etc. Consider history. History proves our government must regulate the First Amendment. It's not absolute. Shank versus United States, 1919. The government must regulate dangerous speech and assembly. We cannot falsely cry fire in a crowded theater, and history proves that churches can be regulated. Reynolds versus the United States. Utah, a Mormon territory, was not granted statehood until the LDS gave up polygamy. History proves that Christian denominations that will not allow transfusions for their children, that the state must step in and regulate this, saving the life of the child. Again, for safety's sake, is this un-American? No. History also regulates Southwest U.S. Indian tribes from using peyote hallucinogenic drugs in their ceremonies. Un-American? No. Is regulating Islam and regulating the building of a mosque un-American? No. 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 I am the infidel. I am the kafir. And I'm mighty proud of it. All right, now a lot of you might be shocked. You know what? After what happened in Canada yesterday, that's going to be happening more and more. In fact, I was, I was amused slash amazed this morning when I was watching the news. I watch Al Jazeera, so I get a Muslim per, uh, perspective. I watch Fox News. I watch CNN. I want to get a good perspective. But I was amazed at watching Martha McCollum on uh, Fox News when she says, gee, golly, you know, a lot of people have said that there's been a lot of attacks on American soil already. Really? It's probably been about 250. And as always, just like when the guy was beheaded, or the woman was beheaded in Oklahoma, what, a month and a half, two months ago? The Department of Justice has again lied, stating just like down in Fort Hood, where Major Hassan murdered, what, 13 of his friends, that was workplace violence. Okay. On the issue of is it un-American to regulate religion? If I were to start the first Baptist Muslim Church of Cannibals and part of our service was to sacrifice little children on the altar, cook them and devour them later on, obviously the state would have a compelling interest. Under the proper economic sphere, God's economy, you had the tribe of Judah where the, I'm sorry, the tribe of Levi where the priests came from, tribe of Judah, where the kings and leaders came from, you had a separation of, of church and state. However, they got their authority and they got their guidance from God, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, under his nature, his love, his will, his law, the Ten Commandments. And they both had to make their decisions in accordance with God's will, the Ten Commandments. That has been the basis of common law, Western common law, going all the way back to the Garden of Eden, following that thread through the people of Israel, the diaspora, until a time that the Reformation came, and the Westminster Confession, 
and they identified that there indeed is a proper separation of church and state. For example, a pastor cannot go out and lead a battalion of Marines, and a battalion of Marines can't go out and lead the church. They are not authorized by God to do that. In their own sphere of authorization, the pastor is given ordained and authorized to teach the holy word of God, the Bible, which I hold in my hand right here. He is not permitted to go out and do as I did, but I was a minister of God. I am a minister of God under Romans 13, 4. And we, believe it or not, and I have proof right here in my briefcase, that the job in 1957 of every military officer in the United States military, which I was a military officer, our fundamental duty was to protect the Ten Commandments because that's the basis of the Constitution. So you have, under God's economy, a check and balance of separation of powers. And that's also found in 2 Kings chapter 11 when the high priest Jehoiada went to the military, the sword of God, Romans 13, 4, and under their spheres of influence, the tribe of Levi, the high priest, adjudicated and tried the queen, Athaliah, who had murdered all of her grandchildren except for the great-great-great-great-grandpa of Jesus. It was Jehoiada and his wife who rescued that boy. Then they went to the military to protect that boy for seven years, and then when the boy was seven years old, they organized the priests under the tribe of Levi, organized and proclaimed him king in the temple, and the military there, using the armor of King David from hundreds of years before, protected the boy when Athaliah, the cruel grandmother, came in screaming treason to murder everybody, the tribe of Levi, working in conjunction with the tribe of Judah under the authority and ordinance, Romans 13, 4, of Jesus Christ, of our triune God. They said, yes, there is treason. Athaliah, you have been tried, convicted. They took her out. They beheaded her. Praise God. Okay. Time for some fun. Adam, dude, Adam, are you awake? Okay, Adam's asleep, so clip number one. I love this clip. Have a good time laughing at this. So we're about out of time, and we started the show today. I watched earlier Channel 35.4 with uh, Imam, Imam Shake and Bake, the guy with the uh, tablecloth on top of his head, the red and white checkered, which I understand, which is Wahhabi. And by the way, when you guys blew up my son, suicide bombed him, you guys were wearing that stuff. My kid's still alive, doing a great job. 
All of you teenagers I saw during that show asking the mom all those great questions, I will answer every question, every question based on the Quran and the Hadith. What did Muhammad do will be the first pillar of Islam. The second pillar of Islam is what did Muhammad do? The third pillar of Islam, what did Muhammad do? The fourth pillar of Islam will be what did Muhammad do? And the fifth pillar of, what did, of Islam is what did Muhammad do? Muhammad was an insane man, bewitched under the power of demons and the spell of uh, Satan. He's a cruel man. And when you see what ISIS does, you see what Muhammad did. Until next week, adieu. Sleep.